Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com coming to you today from the shores of the mighty River Nile in order to bring you episode number eight in our incredible new tutorial series where we're learning how to make Arduino and Python work together. What I'm going to need you to do is pour yourself a nice big glass of ice cold coffee. That is straight up coffee, black coffee, poured over ice, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to you guys who are helping me out over at Patreon. It is your support and your encouragement that keeps this great content coming. You guys that are not helping out yet, take a look down in the description. There is a link over to my Patreon account. Think about hopping on over there and hooking a brother up. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and talk about what I am going to teach you today. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to present my solution to the homework assignment that I gave you in lesson number seven. Now, if you remember in lesson number seven, we got the most excellent DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor up and running on the Arduino. And then what your assignment was, was to pass that data over to Python and then build a visual representation of the temperature and humidity. Now, I think for this lesson, I'm just going to show you my temperature simulation, and then that'll give you guys a little more time to work on it. It took a little more time than what I thought. And then next week, I'll show you my solution for the humidity because I don't want these lessons to get too long. So this week we're going to do temperature. Next week we're going to do humidity. And what I hope you guys will do, first of all, let me know how many of you were able to do this homework. If you were able to do the homework, comment down below. I am legend. Thump, thump. Or uh, otherwise you can leave the comment. I fold it up like a cheap Walmart lawn chair. Okay. Now you guys that have experience with vPython, you should have had a lot of fun with this. You guys that don't have a lot of experience, hopefully you just at least got something to move in response to the temperature change. For you not new guys, that will qualify you as legend, like legend in the making, maybe we should say. Okay, enough of this introductory banter. Let's jump in and see what we are going to do today. So I probably need to get out of your way and then we need to go to my desktop view here. And then let's see, yeah, this, this will be a good place to start. Just a reminder, this is the DHT11 temperature sensor. The pin on the left, if you are using the one from Elegoo, the pin on the left is the data pin. So your pin on the left goes to pin two. And then your pin in the middle is your power. And so it goes to five volts. And then the pin on your right, if you are looking at it front on like I am, the pin on your right goes to ground. Now you've got the thing wired up. Now we need to get the code. And I don't want to rewrite the code from the last lesson. So you can come to the most excellent www.toptechboy.com. And what I need you to do is search on something using this happy little search bar, something like using an Arduino with Python lesson seven, measuring temperature and humidity with the DHT 11, something like that will get you here. And then here you can see the code will come up and click on the double page icon. We should have that code. Now I need you to call up your Arduino IDE. Let's see if we can do that. Come over here. All right, we got our Arduino IDE. And now what I'm going to do is that code that I copied, I am going to paste it. All right, now let's just run this to make sure that the universe is in proper order and nothing broke since last week. Looking pretty happy. I didn't hold my breath this time because, you know, I figured it's a pretty, pretty safe bet it's going to work. Okay, so let's come here. Let's open up our serial monitor. And make sure you guys can see it. Yep, it looks like 86, 30C, and 57% humidity. Maybe I can pull that over. Yeah, 57% humidity. That all looks good. All right, now, the thing is, now that I'm going to be sending that data to Python, I don't want to be sending quite so much data. I want temperature F 
comma humidity. Now you might want to make yours in temperature C, that's fine, but I'm going to make mine in temperature F and then instead of this annotation, I'm just going to put a comma and then I'm not, not going to do any of this temperature C stuff and then I am going to send humidity right I am going to send humidity so it's going to be serial print temperature F serial print comma and then print humidity so it's just going to be temp com humidity that's what I'm sending over I don't want all the labels when I am just sending this over like that does that make sense okay let's go ahead and download this And that looks good. All right, now we need to start working on the other side of things, which is the Visual Studio Code. And so what I need you to do is go ahead and fire up Visual Studio Code. We're going to come over here. I am working. I am working in the Pi Arduino folder. And so in the Pi Arduino folder, I will add the pass data dash five. We are on now dot py and the .py is kind of important and boom fresh new python program just waiting for you to write okay i think this one we just are going to probably go ahead and write from scratch because there's not that much useful ah let's see yeah let me go ahead and get the the one from a few weeks ago just because it'll make this go a little faster and we can focus on the new things and so what i need you to do again is excellent www.toptechboy.com search on something like using an arduino with python lesson four visual display of measure voltage in visual python because remember that's where we were we had the little voltmeter so let's go ahead and let's copy that because i think that should be pretty close let me paste it and so do we want to import time yes do we want to import serial yes import vpython and then we will not be making this visual because we'll be doing a different one so we'll get rid of that we do want to set up our serial port we want to wait for i think that's too long i'm going to put it at 0.5 half of a second all right what do we do here we wait for the data then when there's data we drop out of this loop what do we do we read it and then what do we do we turn it into a string and then we strip off the slash r slash n and then uh, what do we do we uh, change the data packet into an int I, okay here we've got to do something a little bit different and that is going to be uh, data packet uh, equal data packet dot split and what are we going to split it on we're going to split it on the comma okay on the comma that we put in there all right now what we should be able to do we're not going to be doing any of this nonsense down here <clears throat> But now what we are going to do is we are going to say that temper, uh, I'll just call it temp, temp is going to be equal to the float value of, the float value of data packet of zero. And if you've been watching these lessons, you'll understand it. I'm taking, I split it at the comma, so I've got an array with a first number and a second number or really a zeroth number and a first number and the first one that we sent was temp show so this should be temp and now we are also going to say humidity hume is going to be equal to float and then this is going to be data packet data packet of what data packet of one like that okay let's make sure i think you could see all that yeah i think you could see all that now let's just say print let's just print the original data packet and i don't want to have to do a lot of prints i just want to make sure that i am getting the data over here so as soon as i read it i'm just going to print the data packet like that okay so this should just see are we getting the data over so let's run ahead and go ahead and run this and see if we're getting the data over okay it's running it's running it's not doing anything okay somebody tell me what i did wrong somebody tell me i want to know this mistake sometimes i don't make mistakes on purpose but this mistake i made on purpose just because if you haven't already make it you will and when you do it'll make it a lot easier to understand 
what could possibly be wrong? Hmm, maybe we better go back to the Arduino. Okay, so how I would debug it? I would go back to Arduino. I would go back to Arduino if I can. For some reason, I think opening this IDE glitches my video a little bit. I'm not sure if it's recording that, but I would not understand why that is. Okay, so now this is already running. Let's look at this and see what's happening. Ooh, it's going across. It's not going down. What happened? What happened, my friend? Let's look at our print statements here. Uh-oh, look at this. I printed temp, I printed comma, and I printed humidity. What did it never get? Got get it never got the end of line the slash n slash r, and therefore in that while loop when data came, it just sat it dropped out of the while loop it went to the read line and that read line is reading 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 looking for that end of line character that it's never seeing so it is sitting there perpetually for the remainder of the known universe sitting trying to read that in what did i need to put here a print ln and if i do that what's going to happen let's see Okay, Ben, 85 degrees, 58% humidity. That looks good. Now we're going to come back over here. And now it very well could be this is actually going to work. So let's look. Boom, look at that. Okay, now I'm getting all the nonsense on there, but I don't care because I know all this other stuff is going to take care of it. So I know that I've got the data coming in. So that is good. That is very good. Okay, so now... We need to start thinking about what we are going to do with this animation. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to build a thermometer. So I import time, import serial, import vPython. Okay, and then I create my I create my uh, data object to bring it in, to bring the data in. And so now I need to start creating my visual. Well, first of all, First of all, I'm going to have a bulb, and so this is going to be the red bulb of the thermometer, and so I'm going to say bulb is equal to sphere, bulb is equal to sphere, but you know what? What do I always tell you? I tell you, you better get it working on paper before you try to get it working on the Arduino. And I just realized there's going to be a little math involved in this. And so let's see if we can do a little math to make this thing work. And also, I just want to sketch out sort of what my drawing is going to be and put a, put a, few, uh, put a few numbers on there. Just because it's easier to sketch it out, it is easier to sketch it out uh, it's easier to sketch it out on paper before we try to do it in code. And that way we've got something to refer to. Okay, let's see if this is going to, let's see if I'm getting any better. Let's see if I am getting any better at this. Got to get a good palette here. Should have had this done already. I'm sorry. Okay, I think this will be a good thing to draw with. Okay, so what I want to start with is I want to start with a bulb. Okay, and this will be like the blob of the mercury. And let's just start with R is equal to 1. So I'm going to make the radius of that 1. Okay, then what I want is I want this coming up, and this is going to be my cylinder. Okay, and if this radius is 1, then what I want is I want the overall length to be equal to 6. And so from here all the way down, that is going to be 6. Well, actually not. It will be, let me back up here a second. Actually, this is the center of the bulb and that cylinder is going to come down to the center of the bulb and then the length from here to here is going to be six. Okay, the link from there to there is going to be six. Now, if this has an R of one, 
I want to make this an R is equal to 0.75. Okay, I want that R to be 0.75. I want this length to be 6, and I want this R to be 1. All right, man, you know, I've really got to be neater. I'm, I'm kind of sitting here, and I'm afraid I'm going to pop something up that I don't want to, but I'm going to have to stop and be a little bit neater. All right, now what range do I want to go from? I want to go from... Uh, I want to go from zero degrees and I want to go up to 115, 115 degrees. And so this is going to be zero degrees F and this is going to be 115 degrees F. Does that make sense? Now, what I've got to see is that is what I didn't want to have happen. If I have zero degrees, where do I want that to be? Okay. Well, I know from I know from uh, I know from here to here is one. Okay. From here to here is one, and I want zero to be a little bit above that. So what I'm going to say is I want zero degrees to be a length of 1.5. Okay. So this would be one, and then this would be 1.5. Now all the way up here. When I'm at 115 degrees, when I'm at 115 degrees, I want to be at 6, okay? And then I want a smooth transition between those. Well, what do we have? We have two points. We have the points when the temperature is 0. I want the length of the cylinder to be 1.5, okay? And then also, when the temperature is 115, I want the length to be 6, all right? I have two points. What do I need between them? A line. Okay, I need a line. Well, do you remember how we calculate the slope of a line? We know that y minus y1 is equal to m onto x minus x1. And you guys, don't pun on this math. I'm showing you how to do it. And if you tried to do this by trial and error, it would take forever. We're going to spend two or three minutes. We're going to get the equation for the line, and then this whole project gets really, really easy. So we have y minus y1 is equal to m onto x minus x1. So what's the first thing I need? I need to figure out what the slope is, okay? And so how do I figure out the slope? m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, okay? And then what do I have? y2 is 6, right? This is 0 0.2. This is 0.1. Now you can make either 1.1 1 .1 or 0.2. I always try to do it where that little zero in there helps me. But m is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So that would be 6 minus 1.5 over x2, which is 115 minus what? Minus zero. Okay, so then this becomes a slope of 4 over 4.5 over 115, like that. Does that make sense? So m is equal to 4.5 divided by 115. Okay, now we've got to come in and we've got to get back to this. y minus y1 is m onto x minus x1. So y minus, what was y1? It was 1.5. y minus 1.5 is equal to m. What is that? 4.5 divided by 115. 4.5 divided by 115 times what? x minus, what is x1? x1 is 0. Okay, so now y minus 1.5 is equal to 4.5 over 115 times x. Boom. Now the all I need to do is I need to add 1.5 to both sides, and I have y is equal to 4.5 over 115x plus 1.5. Okay. Now, the final thing we need to do is we need to put this in terms of what our variables were. And our variables were we have a measured temperature and we need to turn that into what? A length of the cylinder. 
a length of the cylinder. So our y is length. So our length of the cylinder is <clears throat> 4.5 over 115 times what is our x? x is our temp. That's what we measure plus 1.5. You guys, if you don't understand this, go back and watch it again because it's just like you have two points. You know that when my temperature measures zero, I want my cylinder to be 1.5. When my temperature measures 115, I want my cylinder to be six. Okay, <clears throat> so now this equation is going to make our life so much easier. So keep that, keep that equation out in front of you. And then I'm going to need to come back over here and I am going to need to go back to my code view. And that should be a simple click here. I go back to my code view. Okay, so what do I need to do here? I create a ball, a sphere, and that equation will come in in just a minute. But some of those other things are going to come in right away. What do we need on that sphere? Well, we said the radius of the sphere was what? We said we were going to set that radius to 1. Okay, what would make sense on color? Color is equal to color dot red traditionally. Okay, so we'll go with the tr traditional colors. Okay, and that should create, that should create our red bulb. Simple as that. But now we're going to need that cylinder part that comes up out of the bulb, and that cylinder is going to be equal to, that cylinder is going to be equal to cylinder. I called the object sill, and it's a cylinder. And this, the radius, Okay, the radius of this one, if, if the bulb is one, I don't want the cylinder to be one. I want the cylinder to be smaller. So let's just say 0.75. You guys can play with it and think. Uh, let me know what you think is good, but the radius of about, about 0.75. And again, color is equal to color dot red. Like that color is equal to color dot red. And then... Uh, Let's see, I need to put some lines down here just so I can get that to go up so you can see always very conveniently what I'm typing. So color is equal to color dot red. <coughs> now, do we want do we want that cylinder laying over like this, which is the default position? No, no, no. We want to bring it up like this. And so we need to use our friend who? Our friend is the axis statement, which tells us which direction we're pointing. We want to point zero in the x direction. We want to point one in the y direction and then zero in the z direction. And that should stand that cylinder right up nice and easy. But the way we do that is we say axis is equal to vector and the vector is going to be zero, one, zero. What else do we need to do? Uh, I think that is all that we need on that cylinder. All right. Now what I need to do is I've got a bulb and I've got a cylinder. I better give that cylinder a length. Let's start it off. Length is equal to six. Now that length we're going to be changing as we go, but initially we're just going to set it to six. Okay, now we have our two numbers. We have temperature and humidity. <coughs> temperature is what we have. We've measured temperature, but we've got to turn temperature into what? We have to turn temperature into what? We've got to turn it into length using this equation. Does that make sense? I hope it does at this point. So we're going to come here and what we need is we're going to say L, our length of our cylinder is going to be equal to, and I like to use parentheses, 4.5 divided by 115 and then outside the parentheses times what? Times our independent variable, which was temp and then plus and then plus 1.5 thanks to the math that took us only three minutes to do you know i am not going to use l because l looks too much like a one so i'm going to say len length okay so now i have my length and now what do i need to do i just need to say my sill dot length is equal to len <coughs> now let's run this 
And what I think is it should not be all the way up to six, but it should be a pretty nice amount because 80 is pretty well on the way to 115. So let's just run this and see if we get anything at all good here. Boom, that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. I'm trying to think. I have a radius of one. That just is a little bit fat. That is a little bit fat. And I said 0.75. I think I'm going to change that to 0.6. That was just a little fat. Okay. Now, as we start doing more annotation, we can see if we really did the math right. But just kind of initial feel, it looked like it was about where I would have expected it to be. Okay. That, I think, looks a lot better. All right. So now, what we want to do now is I want to put like a transparent glass around the mercury. Okay. And so what I think I will create now is a bulb glass. So that's glass around the bulb. That is also a sphere. And that would be a radius of, uh, radius is equal to say 1.2, 20% bigger than what the other one was. And color is equal to color dot white. <coughs> but now we want to be able to see the red mercury inside. <clears throat> so we need to set the opacity. Like I want it almost transparent. Transparent would be zero. One would be solid. I want it almost transparent. So I'm going to put an opacity of uh, 0.25. Now we're also going to need a cylinder glass. And so that's going to be the glass around the mercury column. And the cylinder glass is going to be also a cylinder. And then it is going to have a radius of, hmm, let's make it 0.8. It's equal to 0.8. We can look at these after we do it and kind of adjust it. And then this also is going to be color is equal to color dot white like that. Okay, color dot white. And then again, an opacity equal 0.25. Now this shouldn't do anything other than just put that uh, opaque glass around our mercury. So let's see what happens. And we did not get that. Ah, did I forget to put a length on there? Did I forget to put a length on there, on that cylinder? Yeah. And so this should certainly be length is equal to six, just like the other one. But now the other one's going to change, but this one's going to stay the, the same. Okay. Now let's see what happens. Uh, still did not get it. What am, why am I not getting that? Why am I not getting that? I'm getting an error. Why am I getting an error? Line 37, it doesn't like. I don't even have a line 37 yet. It seems to just be really, really unhappy. Did you guys see what I did wrong? Link cylinder dot length is equal to len. Don't have a line 37. Okay, let's see. Was there something wrong here? The radius is 0.8. Color is equal to color dot white. I did not give it an axis, but that would not have made it crash. Okay, let me uh, let me comment this one out just to see if I can narrow it down and see if that's where my error is. Okay. Okay, I got that much. And let's see if we're getting the error and no error. And so whatever it was, it must have been here in this line. So we say radius is 0.8, color is equal to color dot white, axis is equal to vector zero, opacity. <laughs> yes, spelling will kill you every time. 
Oh, you guys were probably yelling and screaming at me all the way around on the other side of the earth. Okay, and it still doesn't work, but let's see if we are getting that error. Okay. Still has an error in there. Oh, 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 oh. This has got to be cylinder, the full thing. Okay. Cylinder with an I. Okay. Now I'm pretty sure this is going to work. You just got to keep telling yourself, don't panic. Okay. Now that looks good. Now, what's not good is it's not updating. So that is definitely not the right length there. So now let's see why we are not getting the right length. Maybe we should print length. So I'm getting the temp. I'm turning the temp into the, uh, I'm turning the temp into the, uh, uh, I think it's got to be cylinder dot, dot length like that. Now let's try it. Okay, now that looks right. Okay, that looks right. All right, so now let's move on and think about what other things we want to do. Okay, so now I don't want to like do something doofus to try to make the temperature change because usually what you're going to do is like you put a match there and you, 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 you ruin your sensor or you breathe on it real heavy and then you get condensation on the humidity sensor. So I'm not going to try to be a hero and make the temperature change because we sort of convinced ourselves that that was already working. But now what we are going to need to do is, you know, let me kind of show you what I don't like okay let me show you what I don't like right now I will come back over here and what I don't like is I don't like all of this black space down here and then you kind of got your your thermometer crowded in the top and if you wanted to zoom in on it you know you sort of lose it off the top so I would rather have this thing in the middle the problem is that vPython references things from the center of the, the uh, sphere and from the bottom or the left edge of the uh, cylinder. So we want to do some adjustments on that. Basically, I want to move everything down by three. Okay. So on this bulb, what I want to do is I want to give it a position and that's going to be equal to a vector and that vector I don't want to do anything in X so I keep it where it is in X in Y I want to do what go down three and in Z I don't want to do anything now this is going to be the same thing this is going to be exactly the same thing that we are going to do here with the uh, that was the bulb now this is the cylinder we want to move it down by three so I just paste in that uh, that position thing. The bulb, what do we want to do? We want to move that down by three and the bulb glass and then we want to move the cylinder glass down by three. So all of those things we're just going to put that position in and that should just pull that whole assembly down three and then anything else that we build we got to remember that we got to reference it down three. Okay, now look at that. You see now I can zoom in more and we can look at different things and it's just much more elegantly centered. I like that a whole lot better. How about you? All right, so now we've got all that done. What do we need? We're going to need some tick marks now. We want to have some tick marks for our uh, actual numbers that we're going to put on here. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm going to put those tick marks in in a for loop and so for and then the way I'm going to think about it is I'm going to start at a temperature of zero and I'm going to go to a temperature of 115. So I'm going to say for temp in range where do I want to go? I want to go from a temperature of zero to a temperature of what? 115. And then using range, what it wants to know, using range, what it wants to know is how big is each increment. And what I want each increment to be is I want each increment to be 10 degrees. All right. Now, what is the problem? We don't put the tick marks based on a temperature. We put it based on a length. Ah, I need to know the length. Oh, I've got an equation. So I am going to say that LEN, the length, is equal to what? We did the math. It was 
4.5 divided by 115, okay, times the temp, which I'm just putting here as the index on the for loop, so it'll have a temp there, and then plus 1.5. So I'm going to step through these 10 temps, and as I step through those 10 temps, I am going to do what? I am going to put a tick mark, which for me is going to be a cylinder, and then the radius needs to be uh, the radius. What does the radius need to be? I'm going to make it a little bit less than the radius of the glass, and so I'm going to make it about 0.7. Okay, so that's bigger than the mercury, but it's smaller than the glass. All right, and now I'm going to make color equal color dot black, and I'm going to make the height. Is that the term? Yeah, it is called height. I'm going to make the now it is it is length. Length is going to be equal to 0.1. That's how thick it is. <clears throat> now also I don't want my thermometer going this way and my tick marks going this way and so I've got to rotate that tick mark up using that same axis is going to be equal to vector and the vector is going to be 0 and x want it going up 1 and y and 0 and z and that should pop that thing up where it is going the right way now I've got to do the all-important position now where is the position it again is a vector Tor, it is a vector, and what is the vector for the position? Well, I don't want to move it, I don't want to move the tick mark around in x, it's going to be right in the middle, so it's going to be 0 and x, and then where do I want it? Well, I want it at that length that I just calculated, I want it at that length that I just calculated, and so there I am going to put at length, okay, and then zero. But wait a minute, what do I know? I know that I moved everything down by three and length is not the right, uh, I'm going to call that the tick position because it's not length, it's tick position. And it's like here, 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 here. It's not a dimension, it is a position. So it's tick position. And then here I'm going to put <clears throat> tick position, tick position. That's all very good, right? That's all very good, but what is the thing I can't forget? I moved everything down by three, so I better subtract three off that y value. Okay, I'm almost afraid to run this thing. I'm not even gonna, uh, let's see. Make sure I killed it. All right, let's run this thing. Ah, boom, look at that. Okay, so then this looks very interesting. Okay, so let's see if we got the right amount of tick marks. This is zero degrees that it was at the one and a half mark. Zero, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, and 110. Okay, and so the next one would be 120, but we were only going to 115, so it stops at 110. That looks really, really, really good. Now the thing could go up above, it could go up above the 110 up to 115, but there's just not a tick mark there. I think that is looking really good. And let's see if our temperature looks right. I think it was like 85 degrees when we looked while ago. So this is 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 85. Math is your friend. Math is your friend. If you tried to do this with 27 different if statements and all that kind of stuff, you'd be pulling your hair out. How long did it take us to do the math? It just took us a few seconds to do the math. Also, we did the one math and it helped us get the length of our mercury right, and it also got us the position of the tick marks right. You see one equation and it solved two big problems for us. I think we need some annotation. So we need to step through and we need to label what <clears throat> what those degrees are. We need to label what those degrees are. So <clears throat> let's come back over here. Let's kill this. Okay, let's kill this. And then the neat thing is we want those labels at the same position as the tick marks. And so we can do that in this same for loop. Okay, we can do that in this same for loop. And so we're going to come here. I want to put a little white space there. 
right? We can come here and now what do I want to do? I want to put a label and that is going to be what kind of label? It's going to be a text label and then I want the color to be equal to color dot white. Okay. And then I want the position to be equal to vector vector and the vector is going to be I want like here is that cylinder I want the label to be to the left of it so in X I want to scoot it over I want to scoot it over a little bit in X and I'm going to scoot it over two so I'm going to say minus two All right now where do I want the label to be in Y I want to be it I want it to be at tick position again so it's going to be tick position tick position okay and what had I better not figure out everything is moved down by three so minus three and then don't monkey with the Z so it's just going to be comma zero like that okay so this is the line that we just did. Label is equal to text. Color is equal to color dot white. Position is equal to vector minus two comma tick position. I better tell it what the text actually is. And so the text is going to be equal to the text is going to be equal to the string value of temp. OK, I want to give it that number like whatever this temp is that I'm stepping through. I want to put that as the label on each one of those tick marks. And now so that we don't get gargantuanly huge fonts, I'm going to say the height of the letters is going to be equal to 0.3. Now we can play with these things as we go, but let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. Shazam! Double chest bump I think is warranted here. Now look at this. We go from 0 to 110 just like we wanted. We come in here and let's look here. Man, look, we are right there at 85 degrees. Man, guys, math is your friend. Go back and learn how to do those lines I was showing you. If you don't know how to do lines, really go through it and really learn it. Okay, now what else do I think I would want? I think that I might want a digital representation. Okay, what I think I am going to create, actually I'm going to put it up here right after the time dot sleep. I'm going to create a dig value and that dig value is going to be what? That dig value, let me do a little windows maintenance here, that dig value that dig value is going to be a label okay a label object now what is the difference between a label object and a text object the text object is th a three-dimensional object but I can't dynamically change the text if I make the object a label I can dynamically change it so what is the text going to be I got to start it at something will dynamically change it but let's start it at 50 Okay, and then it will update every time through the loop. And then what do I what do I want there? I'm going to say a height of 20 pixels like that. And then I'm going to say I don't want a box around it. So I'm going to say false on the box. And we did this, I think, on the voltmeter. So you guys should be pretty familiar with this. And now on the possession position, that's going to be a vector. And then where do we want it? Well, in X, I really don't want to move it in X. So I'll say zero, but I want to come down. I want it to sort of be over that bulb. And so I'm going to come down about two 0.5 we can tweak that later if we need it and then I want to come it out at 2 because if it's in the bulb you can't see it so I need to have it come forward too so that it's outside of that bulb and so we're going to come out too like that <clears throat> now if I'm thinking about this right this should just run and just show a 50 over the bulb but then it shouldn't do anything other than that so let's come over here and see if we get a 50 over the bulb and I'll need to move it over here for you to be able to see it. Boom. Okay, now all we got to do is bring that 50 to life. And that should be fairly straightforward to do. And what we can do down here is now just say that that was dig value. 
And then what do we want to change on it? The text, and the text is going to be equal to what? I think that we need might need to make it a string of the temp. I'd be interested to see if it would just do the temp, but let's do a string of the temp. All right, so now let's run that. Boom, look at that, 86.9. And so that is going to be the actual value. And look at that, we got the digital value. And if we come up here, look at that. That looks like, that looks to me like it is closer. It is closer to 90 than it is to 80. And so that really looks like the 86.72. Now you can kind of see here that as I'm moving around, that 86 is not a three-dimensional object. It kind of stays flat, okay? But we are getting exactly what we wanted there. Man, that is really, really, really neat. I think that is just as slick as can be. And I also think that that's a pretty good stopping point for today. I think that is a pretty good stopping point for today because I don't want these things to become too tedious. And I think if I went any further, it would start getting a little tedious. So your homework for next week is to come up with a, a model to do the humidity. So sitting next to this object, we need something to represent the humidity. And it needs to be something really, really cool. Now, just a reminder, you guys need to post your homework <clears throat> to YouTube. You do a screen capture, you upload it to YouTube, and in the comments down below, you put a link over to your homework solution. On your homework solution, in your description, make sure you link back to this video so that you know people can see what you're doing. You can see what other people are doing and other people can see what you are doing. Okay, guys, man, I hope you all are having as much fun taking these classes as I am making them. I am really excited to get back to into Arduino. I really love Visual Python. I am having a lot of fun with this. If you enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up. Those thumbs ups really gives us some of that YouTube juice to get uh, more people exposed to this video. Also, helps when you leave a comment. If you were able to do this, I am legend. If you were not able to do it, I fold it up like a cheap lawn chair. And then also, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, when you do, make sure that you ring that bell so that you get notified when my future lessons in this series are uploaded. Okay, Paul McCorder coming to you from the shores of the mighty River Nile. I will talk to you guys later.